Beyond Winds from the North Box is finally here and we get our hands on the first release of the Northern Tribe's Orc Allies, the Varunk. And I've been wanting to paint these avatar looking Vikings since I first saw their artwork. The Varank are a blue-skinned race of raiders and whalers, living on the same isle as the orcs of the northern tribes. Where the orcs are native, the Varank migrated, and there has been animosity between the races. However, with the impending doom of the Red Mist and opportunity for allied raids onto the main continent of Lindworm, the Varank now make up a vanguard for the orc raiding parties. Often at the head of this vanguard, we can find the veteran skin changers, Varunk who are so attuned to their spirit totem that when invoked, take on characteristics of the animal they are linked to. The Varunk miniatures from the Beyond set look fantastic and are clearly invoking their spirit totems to wreak absolute havoc to their enemy with their brutal looking punch daggers. I wanted the Varunk to have a strong blue skin tone. The official paint job has a very ice blue tone, but I wanted mine to have a deeper blue with some contrast to the highlights. To this end, I began with a dark purple base to work from. The first layer was then purple, which covered about 95% of the surface area of skin. I only left very dark purple where I saw the deepest shadows would be. The tone was then lightened by mixing in deep blue with the purple before another layer of deep blue was applied after. By taking our time, we're building up layers of each paint and mixing along the way. Our miniature paints are not completely opaque, so making these progressive layers and applying them in thin coats creates a very natural transition thanks to their translucency. This is further reinforced by mixing the paints to make sure each layer has elements of the previous layer as well, which ensures a better relation between the colors. It may take some time if you're not used to this approach, but it allows you to avoid using washes altogether and better control where you want your highlights to be placed. The process was continued to be pushed with tighter and tighter layers of turquoise that was mixed with white for the final highlights. The finished result is striking because not only are we seeing contrast in light, but also color. You could achieve the skin tone going from a dark blue to light blue, but rather than sticking with one color, we have made the central core color blue, but used elements of purple for the shadow and green for the highlights. Our eyes may not initially perceive the purples and greens, but because they are there, it gives the miniature a much more vivid color, which may be gaudy for some, but I love it. Happy with the skin tone, I approached the clothing with the idea of using a lot of earthy colors with greens, grays, and browns. I wanted the skin tone to be the color that drew you to the model. So to avoid the greens from putting focus, black and white was mixed in to desaturate the color and make it far more subtle. This was the same for the black shirt. Nothing is really pure black, so a little white and blue was mixed in to give the material some variance in tone. There were now a lot of browns to get on the model, and before I began really defining them, I focused on making leather a dark brown, while hair and fur was painted with burnt umber.
With the base colors down, I came back to the face to work a little on the mouth and eyes. The skin changer has a wide mouth expression, howling to the sky. To get the inside of the mouth, I used a dark red by mixing in a little black. I left that to dry as trying to work in highlights while it is wet will only make a mess of things. So I now switched my attention to the eyes. The Varunk have intense yellow eyes that contrast nicely with the blue skin tone. But before we go in with the yellow, we have to hit the eye with black. This is to help to find the edge of the eyes and embolden them. Yellow, however, has very poor coverage over black. So using some of the brown that was on the wet palette, I could put on a brown yellow that had good coverage before applying the pure yellow. Looking fierce. Now to add detail to the hair. For the highlight, I chose orange to contrast with the blue skin tone, but so as not to make the color scheme too loud and pull focus from the face, I mixed the base coat of burnt umber in to desaturate the orange and give it a very earthy tone. Applying paint to hair can be a bit tricky, but we can use the sculpt to our advantage by using the edge of our brush and stroking the paint along the length of the hair. Be careful to wick your brush to reduce the load in your brush and avoid painting the recesses. You can then quickly and effectively highlight the hair. As I increased the amount of orange into the highlights, I added a touch of white to lighten, but more importantly, desaturate the orange so that it was made a more subtle tone. Continuing to add detail to the rest of the miniature, I approach the leather in a somewhat similar fashion to the hair by mixing a little orange into the base color and eventually also adding a touch of white for the highlight. However, the fur trim on the clothing was very close in tone to the leather, making it poorly defined. To give some definition, the highlights for the fur trim were paled and lightened with white until they were close to ivory for the highlights. This then gave some separation from the leather. I had said before that I skipped highlighting the mouth because the paint was still wet. Well, it was most certainly dry at this point. And for the highlight for the tongue, I mixed a little white into the wine red to give a fleshy pale red. The color was good, but now she was looking like she had no teeth, making her look like a blue gummy granny. Oh dear God, no. The teeth were a quick fix though. Starting with the burnt umber to mark them out, these were then highlighted carefully with white mixed into the burnt umber to make for a pale ivory and gave her a sharp set of fangs. Everything was now complete apart from the metallics. So changing to my thicker papered wet palette, I went about painting the metallics with black metal. Once applied, a number of areas were giving a necro gold treatment as well. The metallics as is look really nice, but they are rather uniform all over and lack detailing. Time to pull out the oil colors. Using a touch of burnt umber, I thinned it down to a thin wash. And after applying the wash over the metallics, a sponge was padded over the surface of the model to remove the oil color from the surfaces whilst leaving the oil paint in the recesses.
I fully expect these Varank to rip through their enemies with wanton destruction, and I hope you agree that the paint job goes some way of doing them justice. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more content, or I will send the skin changes to flay the skin off of your flesh.